Chartres Cathedral is widely regarded as one of the finest Gothic structures ever built. Constructed during a unique window in time when faith and science struck a harmonious chord, Chartres builders went so far as to carve pagan scientists over the entrance to their Christian church. The people who planned the cathedral felt that these scholars of antiquity, these non-Christian authors, had made a central contribution to the way that they understood their universe. It's almost as though they're being accepted here as honorary Christians for the light that they shed on the world. And Ball finds evidence that beyond just portraying pagan thinkers, the builders of Chartres actually put their thought into practice. For centuries, medieval sculptors carved highly stylized plants merely as decoration. But at Chartres, the flora is more botanically accurate. We can find leaves that are identifiable species. This was something that was quite new. You didn't just carve a leaf. You thought, am I going to carve ivy or hawthorn or figs? And then you'd go out and find what those plants looked like. People were starting to take an interest in the particulars of nature and not just seeing it as some kind of abstract generality. This acute scientific observation of nature was pioneered by the man known as the father of science, Aristotle, whose extensive writings on plants and animals survive to this day. So this changeover from abstract representation to specific representations of plants, in a sense this was an expression of the fact that the philosophy of Aristotle was starting to become predominant. Ball believes the work of another Greek thinker may be encoded in an even more prominent place in the cathedral. This lens-shaped object you can see Jesus seated within is a figure that appears very often in Christian art of this period. It's striking that you can find precisely this shape in the classical text of Euclid on geometry because it's a shape that's formed from two circles, each of which passes through the center of the other. Within this shape, you can create two equilateral triangles, which are the most perfect of triangles. That created a kind of symbolism of perfection that meant that this shape seemed to lend itself to this use for framing the figure of Christ. What is Jesus doing sitting inside a pagan symbol? And why are these pagan ideas from ancient Greece suddenly appearing in medieval Christian buildings? Centuries before, after the fall of the Roman Empire, most classical texts had completely vanished from Europe. This was a disaster for scholarship. But those texts weren't completely lost. A lot of them were translated within the Arabic world. Christian scholars collect classical texts and bring them back to new centers of learning called cathedral schools. It was at the Chartres Cathedral School in particular that the writings of these people like Plato and Aristotle and Euclid and Ptolemy were particularly valued as a way of understanding the world. So Chartres could be considered to have begun the whole project of scientific thinking in the early Middle Ages. In many ways, Chartres represents a unique place and time when religion and science achieved a harmonious balance. There was no essential difference between science and their faith. There was no real conflict between them. They were all an expression of the idea that God had made a comprehensible universe, a universe that we could understand and that in fact we had a duty to understand. But not everyone in the Christian world embraced scientific thinking even if it was in the service of God. There was an argument about whether one should place one's trust primarily in Aristotle or in God. Which of them was right if they seemed to conflict? And who holds power? The academics who tell us about Aristotle or the church leaders? 
And I think it's probably there that we can start to, to find the, the beginnings of the tension between science and religion. Indeed, by the end of the Gothic period, the church went so far as to ban the teaching of Aristotle in the cathedral schools. On that occasion, God won. And the progressive scientific thinkers had to, uh, had to admit and acknowledge that God was the ultimate authority. But by that time, there was no turning back. The more one started to use a scientific way of looking at the world, the less need there seemed to be for God, at least in terms of explaining how the world was made and how it behaved.